As a disclaimer, Monster Fuckers Anonymous is indeed about wanting to love and have sex with monsters, but we want to make things extremely clear from the get-go. The monsters we will be selecting will be sentient and able to consent. Not all of the chosen monsters will be sapient, but we will not be endorsing zoophilia or bestiality. Anthropologically, monsters all around the world and media representations of them have had many racial and sociological implications. We will be as transparent and ethical as possible, while also sex positive and mostly having fun. Monsters. Creatures feared all around the world in folklore and myths. Terrifying beings such as the fiendish and frightening fae, demonic devils, sultry sirens, hazardous harpies, and countless chaotic creatures coming from crevices of every continent. As long as stories have existed, there's been one pressing question that has remained unanswered by scholars for generations. One powerful thought that has plagued our minds for millennia. Can we fuck these monsters? That is what we're here to find out today. Welcome to Monster Fuckers Anonymous. Another fantastic episode of Monster Fuckers Anonymous, aka MFA, aka Two Horny People on the Internet Talk About Mythical Creatures and How We Want to Bone Them. I am always am your creative creature consultant cleric here to talk about monsters and all these weird scenarios that they're in. And with me, as always, is our tenacious troubadour of tentacle troublemaking, Joe. A little technical analyst. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot the fifth T in that one. I'm abstinent today. <laughs> okay, so what I'm hearing is in this episode, I will be the outrageous one and Joe will be the more tame. <laughs> it, that probably isn't even going to be true. <laughs> you know, we'll make a prediction for this episode. This yeah, episode yeah, will yeah. be the either, since we're doing a lot of things different this episode, it, this will be like where we switch it up. It's just going to be the big switch up episode. Uh, speed of the big uh, a switch up. So we're about four episodes in, and we like we did the first three episodes. We if you guys have been listening from like the beginning, where we did two. Me and Joe picked two monsters from like a category, and we talked about them each bringing two in. We are now actually going to change it up a little bit, uh, which we think will be fun and interesting. And you'll let us know whenever this episode goes live. You'll let us know if you like it. We'll be like probably three episodes deep in recording so you will we'll get feedback probably a little bit later but what we're going to do is instead of doing two monsters each i am going to bring a monster in uh joe is going to bring a monster in and then our producers uh, our wonderful producers kez and dare absolutely fantastic uh people who are subjected to listening to me and joe be horny on the internet uh have decided to pick a monster within the same category me and Joe have no idea what this monster is. Absolutely not. We will be seeing it and reading a description and seeing a picture of it all for the first time while recording this episode. Like any Literally. episode going forward. I'm scared. I don't know if you are, Joe. I'm a I'm bit not. worried. I'm not. Whatever our producers can throw at us, they can try. Here's the, here's the thing, though. It's because... For they've Kez has sat here for three episodes and has just been building. It has like been built by like end up building aggression of just like why the fuck do I have to do this? And now we've given them an opportunity. We've given them an opportunity to just like fuck our day up. And today's monster, today's uh, monster was picked by our per, one of our producers, Dare. So shout out to Dare. While they're editing this, I will be cursing your name. The entire fuck time, fuck you, Dare. Dare, put a put a put a fuck you air horn right here. Put it in production. Go, fuck you. Uh, put that in production. If it's not in there, editor notes coming your way. Cleric and I are gonna be incels after this. Exactly. Welcome to our incel arc. If we don't like it, uh, but with all that business stuff out of the way, we're first. Let's, let's introduce today's topic. Today's mm. overall kind of theme. And, Joe, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? 
You feel like praying today? Yeah, I do. Well, because that's because we're going to be calling on some of the lords, because today's topic are celestials. Celestials, angels. Those who worship up above the clouds. Who think they're better than us. Fucking pieces of shit. They're hot, though. They're hot. (laughs) They're hot. They are hot. hot. Now, celestials, typically, like you said, angels exist up in the high heavens, have been in bountiful different religions and medias and different representations. All like you can you can literally throw like a stone in any pond of like a of a like a topic and angels will appear in them somewhere. You can't like talk about any I don't think any form of media or any form of religion or anything without bringing in celestials. But we I think we're going to with the today's topic we're going to ease into like the celestial stuff, you know? Mhm. So, for me, today I've picked my monster, we're going to start off with me, because I am the best, and I always am, is I'm talking about the D&D uh, interpretation of angels, especially the most powerful ones, which are the Solars. Solars are considered the most powerful of all angels, that even demon lords fear. They tower over mortals at nine feet tall with deep, commanding voices. Their skin appears metallic in shades of gold, silver, bronze, and copper, with wings that show off their regal position. Believing in law, freedom, and absolute loyalty, Solars are the epitome of honor and purity. So, Joe, here's the thing. Mm Mm-hmm. They're just hot metal dads. I uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I will say the one thought that came to my mind, like as soon as like all this talk of like commanding and loyalty and uh, subdilfs. <laughs> no, I hmm. You're not wrong. They I'm are not, servants. They do I'm have not wrong. They're not wrong because they're absolutely loyal to their god. They're the most powerful ones, but they're absolutely loyal. So they're technically, if if you excuse my layman's terms, they're the little bitch boys. <laughs> they can be your little bitch boys. Yeah, just, I mean, okay. So did you have anything else that you wanted to open the floor with in terms of the Solars? Well, okay. So they do here because I want to talk about the whole scale wise. So they do mate with humans on rare occasions. They do mate with humans, which then produce asimars. So mm-hmm. within possibilities, it does happen. Are they good? Fa- are they good parental figures? Probably not. No, they're um, never there. <laughs> they're never there, and they're absolutely loyal to one person. And it's definitely not going to be you. To be real with you right now, they may love your devotion. Solars are not going to be loyal to you, one hundred percent. They are loyal to their god. And that's about it. They're like, they'll see that you're, oh, you're devoted to my God too? Stacy, I so am into you because of your devotion, but I gotta (laughs) go. My boss is calling me and that's more important than you or the child I just put in you. (laughs) Fly off. Enjoy, I hope you enjoy that image that I just gave to you. It's like, if the Lorax was Catholic and worse... No, the Lorax is hot though. Lorax, uh, Lorax episode coming soon. No, 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 no. <laughs> no? The Lorax has a deadbeat with wings, <laughs> but the wings are on his ass. No, no. Okay, I'm looking at this image right now. The wings are not on the Solar's asses. They're right on the back. Oh wait, you mean the Lorax? Oh, you mean the Lorax? Yeah. The Lorax. <laughs> yeah, the Lorax would technically have wings right on his ass because he doesn't really have. Anyway, a you're not talking about the Lorax. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Abstaining. Abstaining for the low rights. And I think uh, the fun thing about D&D is that um, gods come in like all sorts of alignments and practices, I guess. So angels aren't just like all like these are all gods, angels. They follow one or however many like laws and such. Um, uh, I think a solar for say what's a lawful god like Bahamut or something. Yeah, Bahamut is. Um, yes. I mean, I just thought about it and like dragonborn, dra- draconic like angels. That sounds great. That sounds hot, especially that they're already great. metallic and like 
You got that, like, the bronze or the gold or the silver. Nine feet tall. They're tall-ass daddies. And you know, here's what I'll say. If they're going to be loyal to you, if they're going to be loyal to you, because, you know, they're going to be, like, all, all, like, weight on you hand and foot. You know, they're going to care. They're not going to cheat. The issue that I will bring up in my own thing is... To, actually, I'll bring up three issues. Three issues I see. I also have an issue, but go okay. ahead. I'll go one, and you'll go. I will go from there. My first one is that the purity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're waiting till marriage. I thought I was exactly okay. that was exactly what I was going to bring up. Yeah, no, exactly. They are just like we have to wait till marriage. We can't even hold hands. We can kiss every three six, uh, every three months. We have like a three month increment where we can that. Kiss. Yeah, so that I was wondering. I think. With the Solars being from different gods, I think the rules might also be different. That is true. Because if, like, say, Bahamut is more cool with, like, premarital sex, then, yeah, they're going to be cool with that. But if you get, like, uh, like, say, a god of purity, and they're like, no, you have to wait until you're married, and then, like, six months into the marriage, when you've, like, conferred and you really know you love each other, then you can maybe do over-the-close stuff. Mm. And they're going to keep to that rule. Also, we'll keep to that kind of mindset and rule for it. So that that that's an, that's the issue. It's their purity that will like. Well, it's like if you're into that, like the more like pure, like noble soul. I don't want to like. Well, I'll wait till marriage. Fine, that works. But if you're mm-hmm. like, I want to fuck this metal dad so hard and fucking let him like fucking rock my junk so hard, and it just they're like, no, I gotta wait. It's gonna bum you out. The, the other issue I have, the other one, this is a more personal. Well, actually, there's two more personal ones. Mm-hmm. One is the wings. I despise, I just, I hate back wings and anything mm. because it's just going to get in the way. They're feathery, especially like angel wings, even though they're metallic, they're still feathery and they're just going to like be like there. And like na- when trying to those, hug are them. those are they knives. Those are knives. Yeah, they're just like knives, just like up in your back, just stabbing you at all times. Uh, and they're like heavy, and when you try to hug them, like sure, they, but solars don't. You don't know if they retract them. They usually keep their wings like on their back. You, they, they don't really retract. So you gotta like, yeah, like struggle to even get a hug around them. If so, to get like cuddle and on anything like that, it's not. It's not gonna work out. It just really isn't. And the, the last, the last problem I have is they're probably cops. <laughs> They're angel cops. They're narcs. They're narcs. They believe in the law. And sometimes the law is wrong. And if you come to this podcast looking for anything other than that. <laughs> Laws are threats. <laughs> the dominant sociotic class. Shout out to Brennan Lee Mulligan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's they're just angel cops. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're angel cops like the... I don't know if you've seen this. Actually, this brings up a very interesting thing I'm about to bring. I, don't, I think this is a very uh, s- like niche thing in the grew up as a Christian kid community. There is a movie series that was like published. Like I think there's like three of them. It's called Angel Wars. Mm. Now, Angel Wars is they have these angels, and they're named after favorite. Like there's like uh, there's like Gabriel, there's Michael, there's like all these like there's also all these like famous with like Zariel, I think is in it. He's like this young kid on a certain, but they're right, like right, right. these angels that fight giant demons, and like they have like armor and like wings, and like they like like they do this whole thing. But they're technically just angel cops. Those ones are <laughs> angel cops. But the thing uh-huh. with that one is they have skateboards. They could turn their wings into <laughs> skateboards, and that's cool. Oh, interesting. Okay, so wings could be sort of be like um, metaphors for accessories of some sort. Yeah, so they could turn their wings into... I think if I remember correctly, one of them had like a skateboard and was surfing on it. And remember, one of them was at least hot. One of them was hot. The rest looked malformed in that series. I'm not going to... Like, let me see if I can even find a picture of it to send to you so you understand like the context of what I mean. But they're just... So they, so they are technically... If you're going by like... If there was, was Solars, they would be space cops. And that's the best example of it. I don't know why I brought that up. You know what? <laughs> 10 out of 10 Angel Wars uh, would bang one of them. One. <laughs> one. So 
Joe, any any thoughts on Solars? I, I, I have one thought. And... Ha- Cleric, you are uh, a frequenter of TikTok. Yeah? I am. Yes. That I am. Do you, kind of going off of this whole thing that Solars are hot but lame... I don't do think you, that's the conclusion we made, you, but okay. Do you think that Solar's... Do you know what soaking is? I'm scared to ask. I'm This, s- literally, two days ago, there uh, a fucking TikTok came out about this Mormon girl. And it's Mormon, so you know it's this is going to be an interesting... Uh, Oh, wait, I think I've heard of this. I yeah. think I've heard of this. So specifically, soaking is uh, penetration without thrusting, an act known as soaking, wherein in order for the couple to further benefit from soaking, no. a friend helps them out by bouncing on the bed next to them to get things moving or jump humping. And the, the little <laughs> caption on the TikTok is, when your bestie is called to soak in a BYU dorm and you have to jump hump for her. No! I... Uh... Very strict rules about touching over the clothes or under the clothes and no petting, so it's all very much against the law of chastity and would still require the man and woman to confess to their bishops to be able to become good standing members in the church. So it really just makes no sense. So I need to know why you brought this up all right. Why? What does Mormon kids soaking have to because do? Because what it? if they have to do this? What if if there are laws of chastity and there are backwards ass sorts of understandings of penetration and what sex is? Like at the very least, they're like knowledgeable in the fact that our course is also sex. Like at least they understand that. That's great. That's very you know whatever. But. For for listeners who don't have visual, my my glasses are off, or I had to take my glasses off. Our producer Kez's head is in her hands. Um, the conclusion I'm gonna make, because Joe, you bring up actually a great point. I think you bring up an Thank excellent you. point. Thank I'm you. not gonna I'm not gonna deny it. They might be soakers. <laughs> 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 And like, you know, obviously, who knows if that is even real. TikTok is not an empirical source. Um, yeah, but now the idea is out there. But the idea is out there. The idea is out there. So now if we're bringing that logic, as we, we usually do, is bring real world logic into a fantasy setting, you mm-hmm. know, as you should at as all times. You, for some reason, should. Uh, 100%. They would be soakers. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna change my answer. They would 100% be soakers. There's no way that these people who are the epitome of purity would not be like, we can't do anything. So let's just move our shit in there. Hey, I brought my, I brought my diva friend who is will bounce the bed for us, mm. so we should be good. There, honestly, there are probably other types of like angels in D and D, or like you know the chaotic. Uh, alignment angels that are like what the fuck is wrong with all of you? i think there's uh there is hold on i think it's the one it's with an e i was going to do it actually uh, there's one i want to we'll talk about them in the future because i have opinions on these ones um they are called pause for math uh eggs amphirions amphirions i've never heard of that they are okay. So Imperions actually, they're a little bit interesting for an, either another episode, but still, I will I'll talk about them. Is that they are these marble creatures from the limbo realm? So mm. they are technically the child children of gods, and so they're like in limbo, and they literally believe they are the best creatures on like the planet. Uh, they think that they're amazing, and some of them like try to br- go to Earth and like bring out their like their goodness and everything, but. The most of the time they are chaotic and they come down and they want to rule like they're princes from the limbo realm. So they want to rule. And the problem is with that is that they'll mess up everything. They can literally change the environment around them in order to like 
make that rules and they also have a little bit of like a people if people look at me they'll fall in love a little bit kind of vibe because of how attractive why didn't you choose this one because i i want to talk about angels a little bit you know we could do both we could you know this is one and a half (laughs) no 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 no. but you commit to this lame soaker and we (laughs) okay because i i feel like every time i pick a monster it's been somebody who like changes the reality of people around them and is just like i want to i'm going to be like a gaslighting kyle they get a gaslighting kyle and this guy is just a chad like a chad worthington who like his kid like his dad helps him out cuz even if they die like their parents bring him back so this is a chad <laughs> like i would i keep picking chads and gaslighter people i wanted to be different i wanted to bring a, a sub bitch boy you daddy you can fix them no you can't you really can't but so that's you a- want you want broken people. This is what we're going. Well, monsters are broken. They can, you know, for sure. Like there sure. are for sure, sure issues there. Everyone's a little bit broken. Now onto the Popo skill for Solars. I we I we legitimately <laughs> talked about the Lorax, Empyreans, and like completely other. We talked about Mormons. Yeah, let's go <laughs> to the scale. That's fine. <laughs> what more can we say? They're metallic. They're nine feet tall. I said like they're bitch boys. They soak. They're purity people. <laughs> they they come. Why do down. I care? Why do I care about that? Well, okay, like they are gonna be loyal. Okay, on the on the positive, I'll, I'll talk I about the positive. Care. I okay, all right. Go what ahead. do you mean you don't care? No, go, no, go ahead. I'll explain. I'll explain. Okay, I on the positive. Since I'm the one who brought them up, I'll say the positives of the Solars is that they are loyal. They love you. They're gonna be these devoted people towards you. So if they. Not only are they low to their god, but if they come down and they like, they do come from the heavens and sometimes meet people, they come down and they they do are loyal. Like they're going to be loyal to you, and like be the strong metallic bitch boy daddies. Mm. So it works. Like that's hot. And even if they, even the female, uh, I keep saying bitch boy daddies, but they're they can be any gender, or or no gender. So honestly, it can be anybody you want, and they're just nine foot tall, tall ass. Hot. That's it. <laughs> bitch boys. Bitch hot. boys is bitch. Bitch boys is eternal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what is what is your problem, Joe? What what my is pro- my problem is that like loyalty is never something like even if you're loyal to someone like, Oh, I, at least I've never cheated or whatever. It's like loving. I, I will always say this. And this even applies to monsters for some reason is that loving someone is not enough. Mm. There is work to be done. And if I'm having a child, if I'm having an asthma with someone, I'm literally, I'm, I've been watching film Alchemist Brotherhood a lot these days. I would simply, if I were Trisha, I would be fucking other men by now. Van Hohenheim <laughs> Like my kids will have multiple stepfathers if need be. Like that is just not admirable to me. It's tired. No, you know that's valid. Honestly, to for Van Hohenheim, he's a bitch. And the fact that he even had a girl is fucking fun. Like he got super lucky. Absolutely, he should have got. He got super lucky just, in having Trish. Just don't have. Just don't have kids. I know that that's like not the human experience or whatever, but like, yeah, Van Ho- Hohenheim was like a little living philosopher stone. So technically, not a human experience he needed to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry that like you're you know are filled with all your friends that died, you know, <laughs> however many years like ago. That. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Don't tell your wife to wait for you if you're leaving for an indiscriminate amount of time. Exactly. Yo, he really did just say, wait for me, and then let her fucking die. Like, that is... He does not get redeemed. He he has no redeemable qualities. And if we're... Okay. And if you're comparing Van Hohenheim to a Solar, which might be comparable, because technically, he is a stone... And that is a ten stones which can be metallic, and solars are made <laughs> okay. of metal okay. people. Okay. If okay. you are relating them, if we're saying solars are kind of like Van Hohenheim, they are bitches. They're lame. Yeah. I. This is a Van Hohenheim hate podcast. I agree. Welcome to episode one. <laughs> Van Hohenheim hate podcast. <laughs> Play the intro. Uh, put put the intro here, producers. That'd be great. Uh, roll the intro. But in any case. 
I agree. You know what? That's actually a very good and valid point. I think loyalty does not equal love, and especially if they're still loyal to something else, which is technically their god is always going to be ranked yeah. above you. So if their god told them to murder you, they would Abraham your Isaac. <laughs> that's a that's a biblical reference for your kids watching. If you've ever read the Bible. <laughs> which one have you read the Bible today? <laughs> so let's go on to the Popo scale. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> I don't know why the phrase if you ever read the Bible today really just got me. <laughs> First piece of merch. Um, oh, uh, for possibility, I would I would rank this an eight. This is well within the realm of possibility. I think if they do come. They do come down from heaven. They do meet with people. Though they actually, you know what? Maybe I'll change it back because in the description of like D and D lore, it says rarely on the rare occasions mm-hmm. that they do it. So mm-hmm. they could do it, but it's very rare. But when they do do it, it is possible. When they do descend from the heavens, it is possible. I'll change it to a six. I, I just locked yeah. myself out of it. <laughs> Waiting for one of these bitches to just suddenly develop carnal feelings like once every five years. I, I get it. Same for sure. However, why would I even want to approach this person? Don't describe it like this! Don't Um, Okay, 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 okay. So, possibility. It's like a five. It's like, it could happen. Okay, real middle of the road. I respect it. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, it's attractiveness. Nine out of ten. They're just hot. They're nine feet tall, commanding <laughs> voices. The only point I'm taking off is because of the wings. If we're just going by <laughs> appearance alone, it's their dumb fucking wings. I hate. I just hate giant fucking wings. I. It's. It's. If you're a half humanoid, why have giant fucking wings? I'm not gonna get into it. This is a whole other debate for another time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at them. I mean, I'm. I was really into Angelmon and the girl one. Angel. Oh my god. We're gonna have a Digimon episode. I'm, I'm telling you, everyone. I, I'm, I'm putting it into the universe that we're having a Digimon episode. I, I like them. Um, I like the way they look. They're very strong. If they had like, uh, those knight helmets or like any kind of mask situation, that would be mm. that would increase their mystique. Why? <sighs> why the fuck did I not pick Andrew? I'm just realizing this. Why didn't I? There's so many other options I could have picked than Solar. We're gonna Once have a. Again, Celestial episode part two coming soon. Once again, we are fully unprepared. Um, <laughs> it's a yeah. I mean, they are hot. Eight. Like we're not denying that they are. No, yeah. It's it's the wings. It's the fucking wings. All right, and then it's audacity. It had like how how audacious, how much hubris must you have to approach this person? And I am going to say it is a two. I think this is very audacious to do. They're the most powerful angels. Like you have to really be like part of their mission from their loyalty, like yeah. from, their, from their God in order to even remotely, uh, even remotely be like considered from them. I also agree with two. I think in the sense of like, are you just going to be some horny human just walking up and be like, hey, like, do you want to go get a drink or whatever? And that still is like, I do not partake in alcohol or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, do you want to go on a date? <laughs> and just, it's, it, that is just truly the most, like, that is some hubris. That is some hubris. You really, you gotta be, you really gotta tr- like really stretch it up. You have to be so confident in what you got to even remote and persistent. it. Yeah, you definitely need persistence. And if they say no, and if you don't like, you don't obey that, then you're weird. And you're that weird. could be, a, yeah, like well, no means no, everybody. And if you don't obey that, don't listen to our podcast, you fucking weirdos. Um, next up is parental approval. I'm giving this a nine out of ten. Actually, no, I, this will be my, I think, one of my first 10 out, one, 10 out of 10. Yeah. This will be my one 10 out of 10. Because if I show up to my house with a motherfucking angel, 
my parents would bow down and be like, please impregnate our son. Ah. I do not care that it's gay, that is a man, or if it's a woman or somebody who is non-binary, impregnate him. Please. <laughs> please impregnate our son. <laughs> if I brought an angel to my parents. <laughs> so uh, this is a 10 out of 10. To my Christian parents, 100% 10 out of 10. Wow. The second wow. piece of merch, impregnate my son's t-shirt <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... I'm teetering between eight and nine because I feel like my parents, our parents are just simple. They're simply humans and Mm -hmm. anything even remotely that isn't in their imagination is not real to them. Like if an angel actually came and was just like, I am from God and whatever, my parents are like, prove it, (laughs) prove it bitch or whatever. Like just, I'm, I'm sure no matter what they're all, just be a whole debacle i'm sure once they understand and like a miracle happens and whatever and my i don't know parents age i mean uh de-age 10 years i don't know like if something if they're actually something was provided what can solars do in terms of magic they're actually very powerful so solars um can do a lot of things they're as the most powerful ones they have powerful like uh hold on sorry Solars are actually very powerful. They have these abilities like to do divine magic. So anything a, like a cleric can do, a uh, a solar can do even to more uh, powerful things. They can cause earthquake, natural disasters. They're very powerful beings that can affect the mortal plane in ways that not even uh, not even many gods can. Well, they can. They're not as powerful as God, but they can affect the natural world. They can cause earthquakes, tsunamis, all that other shit. Mm-hmm. And like anything a cleric can do, such as like raise the dead, uh, heal people, revivify, wish, any of that shit, they can do. They can also tell when people are lying, it looks like. I don't want to be with them anymore. <laughs> they can tell when I'm lying. I'm the I'm a fucking liar. So I, I would, they'll walk up to me and be like, hey, does this does this pants make my bulge look big? And I'll be like, no, babe, looks fantastic. They can tell. Why would you I'm not? Done. Why would you, why are you lie about that? I don't know. I lie about weird shit all the time. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense the shit I lie about. Like, it really doesn't. Like, it'll be a normal conversation. It'll be like, hey, did you, uh, did you eat today? Or not even that you eat today. It's like, hey, uh, um... did you enjoy their salad? I was like, no, but I did. I did enjoy the salad. I don't know why the fuck I lied about that. But it's, it's the little things. And I don't need to have that in my life. I need to have the mystery. <laughs> the mystery yeah i do also lie about eating uh just so that people just fucking don't worry about me. don't worry about it i'm going to what if oh. i yes it's i'm eating mcdonald's again listen yeah what if this is my third mcchicken of the day get off my dick stop asking me questions did you eat the mcchicken no no are you the lying liars, the lars you know what they're also probably like everything has like Everything has to be fucking like fresh and like. Oh my god, they're exercise freaks. Not only are they narcs, they're like, here's a vitamin pill for you. Oh no, change the score, change the whole score, lower yeah. it down by two oh points. My whatever, god. whatever's the end score, Why lower it down by two points. Because I want it to be different. I can't keep picking like gaslighting chads. This is the religion episode. All of them are. Oh, now that's no, that's a moot. But I, oh, I will say. So okay, I'll say, I'll say eight for for a parent parental nine. I'll give, I'll do nine, nine, sure. Okay, so we're now we're going to pause for some math to do it. Um, no, do our, no. All right, we won't be pausing for math. No, so, it's okay. No, you're right. So the overall score for Solars right now is 6.4. Uh, I got a 6.75. Joe got a 6 out of 10. But Joe, I want to pitch something to you. Okay. So we just, as near the title end of our scoring, we we realize that it's not only are Solars narcs, they're exercise freaks, and they're kind of they're kind of lame. So I want to propose something new to you on the spot right now. Is uh, okay. If, I want to propose us doing per monster for something, or just for this monster, we can say uh, 
our seal of disapproval, <laughs> in which which we can knock the seal like a point, like the score overall score down, up or down, or seal of approval or seal of disapproval. And I think I'm gonna put my seal of disapproval on this. This one, Solars kind of suck. They they're mm-hmm. hot. They're physically and they're physically attractive, but right. everything about their personality and what they do suck. So I say we knock them down a point. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to knock them down a point too? So we do. So yeah. it's like one one. So it's technically so the overall score would technically be a four point four. Excellent. So love that. because this on in this case like they would be around um the overall score for you want T. I feel like the UNT should also get the oh, field. Yeah, you know, what, retroactively in this episode, knock them down three points just because we had to wait three episodes. We yeah, had to yeah, wait yeah. like two episodes to do it. Yeah, they would be they would be like higher than all of our snake people. No, fuck no. No. Seal of disapproval that. You know, we'll also I think you can also say this for like the last episode of a season where like we'll go back and like, hey, this one should be higher, this one be lower. But I'm I'm doing this one retroactively. This one should be lower. <laughs> Going forward, this one should be lower. I'd like everyone to notice and realize and recognize and uh, process that all of the seal of approval ones are the ones that Cleric has chosen for himself. So okay, okay, all right. This is this is what we're doing. You could at least be a zealot for your choices. Like you could. Like, I'm being objective. What is wrong with me being objective? I pick a monster. I look at it. I'm like, hey, I this don't will care. Be I don't care. Let's go. Let's keep going. So you live disapproval going. from me and Joe is a four point yeah. four out of ten for the Solars. Whatever. What are, What are you bringing to the table? If my seal of, of approval or disapproval is being called into question, let's call into question what you're bringing to the table. What are you? All right. Sexy music start. Zadkiel is the archangel of freedom, benevolence, and mercy, and the patron angel of all who forgive. As an angel of mercy, some texts claim that Zadkiel is the unnamed biblical angel of the Lord, who holds back Abraham to prevent the patriarch from sacrificing his son. Because of this, they are usually shown holding a dagger. Archangel Zadkiel works primarily with the violet flame of transformation, meditation, and invocation. This archangel can be experienced as androgynous, as they are the perfect balance. So, Zadkiel the archangel, the archangel, if you will. The archangel. Um, <laughs> have you, you know the story of, like, you have, when you literally said this earlier in the episode, I was like, Oh, what a tie-in. Um, you know the story of Abraham and Isaac? I do. I do. I do. I, when if... God was like, hey, Abraham, kill your son for me, LOL. Uh, mm-hmm. And Abraham was like, I guess I got a Isaac. We got to check out this sheep over here. We're going to kill it. And then... And then God just said, I'm just joshing you. And then an angel came to tell abraham that like hey like you don't have to do it like you were fucking right like i mean you were you're like you did a good job or whatever that angel was zed kill the art <laughs> oh my god this is a dumb tie-in i hate that this tied in i hate a uh, run-off <laughs> joke just tied into your bit fuck this Z- but yeah okay so that's interesting i oh, interesting but here i want to just take my initial thought of it um, yeah, and I hope you will uh, take my constructive feedback with this one. Disagree with you? No, no. I, I think this is constructive. What you've described to me and to our audience and to our producer, uh, you've described an angelic twink. Yeah. Uh huh. I just want to sit on that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to sit on it because that sounds like you? That like is you what you are? I'm an angelic twink to you. You are a. Uh, this is, a, this is with a Christian upbringing that has religious trauma. Yes. All right. You know what? That's what I'm going to change my grinder profile to Angelic Twink. <laughs> Angelic Twink merch coming soon. <laughs> upon, upon looking up more about Zadkiel, I did not realize the culture of, you know, like there's like a huge culture about angel numbers and shit. Yeah. But I didn't know that actually extended to the Archangels. And there's like, Zadkiel specifically, like, fucking, like, inspires all the people that just, like, call themselves indigo children, which is just, like, 
neurodivergent children. Like people, like the people, like the spiritual fucking ass people that are like, oh, I, I was an indigo child. We were so weird. Anyway, Zed kills the angel of mercy and Violet, which means you can get, you know, you know, some strange astrological sex thing. Um, Again, you're, you're describing just, okay. So here's, here's what I'm saying. I'm, 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 there's just a lot that I found out today and specifically about Zadkiel. Zadkiel is an archangel that I actually really enjoy just in terms of like media and just like everything that they stand no, for. What's interesting to me is that even the Christian faith, they allowed Zadkiel to be kind of androgynous because that's not really a big thing in there. And for angels to even be mm-hmm. kind of ambiguous, because even if you go by biblically accurate angels, which are still hot, I'm not going <laughs> to let anybody in the comments or anybody say that biblical angels aren't hot, even if all their eyes and it's glowing orb, I'd stick my dick in that. But with Zachiel, again, it's interesting that it can relate to so many just like LGBT teens and like there's like their like the angel for them, you know, the angel for us. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing I want to bring up, which I think will actually just boost uh, Zachiel a bit, and also I think Solars or just angels in general, if we keep talking about them, is a different interpretation of angels that I want to bring up, mm-hmm. which is this is from the series Lucifer. Now the reason. Oh, Spo- I know you hate. I know you hate the show. I know you hate it. I know. And for everybody who's watching, I love the show. Joe hates it. We've talked about it several times. But the reason I bring it up is this is a bit of a spoiler. So if you go to watch the show, I don't give a shit. Um, yeah, go fuck yourself. Go fuck right. yourself. If you if you uh, they're not a movie podcast, I don't have to give you spoilers. I don't have to like spoiler warn you, losers. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're so mean. We're so mean to people on this. <laughs> but. Angels self-actualize. So, like, should angels, mm. um, like, however they want to appear, however their powers want to, like, happen, however they want to, like, their face. Like, for Lucifer himself, like, he pictured himself as, like, a piece of shit. So his face <laughs> was always, like, a devil face. Or, like, his wings were always demonic. Or his wings, he still pictured himself as an angel at first. But then as he realized he did more shitty things, they became, like, demonic. And then, like, as he did more and more shitty things, his body became demonic. And it happened with every other angel. And it applied to everybody. So if Zagiel appears as this kind of like they self-actualize as this like kind of non-binary androgynous, sorry, some dishes fell behind me. Um, this non-binary androgynous kind of feel. I think it's interesting. I, I don't know where I'm going on this like tangent, but it's still I think just if angels self-actualize and Zagiel is one of those angels, they can appear however they want to appear, and that's also a plus. Yeah, literally. What I'm kind of getting with the energy that I have with all of like Zedkiel's apparent followers being indigo children, super spiritual people that wear purple and have amethyst crystals and stuff. Zedkiel will probably, if we're going to give, you know, assign them some sort of like Chad Kyle form or whatever, hmm. Zedkiel is <laughs> like a person that has an exotic name or something like i said like no one is name is this literally any in any country um their name is probably amethyst honestly i could see um, that if they're gonna pick yeah. a human name and they are they read tarot cards they have the crystals that are like thousands to hundreds of dollars and they're just like good vibes and i honestly don't enjoy that but that is <laughs> the vibe that I think this is like the prescribed vibe, but my I have a different sort of thing that I want to go for. Here, so, okay, no, no, I think I, I agree with you. I think it is a vibe. I think if you were to picture just like, okay, in the worst sense of the word, they're kind of a hippie. Uh huh. In the in the they're like this hippie kind of like vibe, kind of like, hey, let's read tarot cards. Let's get in, let's get in my van. Let's drive around country. And just, like, read tarot cards and, like, find crystal caves and just, like, be part of, like, the world. Which is a vibe to some people. Um, but here's what I will say. To which will, I I think, will be a detractor. While Solars, which, I bring this up. While Solars rarely appear on Earth, but they do mate, usually angels, like archangels, do not. In Christian yeah. faith, they don't mate with humans. I don't think there's any, at least from my knowledge of it, they don't inter. While they interact with humans, they don't have romantic feelings. They don't do that. So, 
it's more of this is like a fret like a vibe like you're hooking up with Zaphiel Zach, I think Zariel, sorry. Hooking up with this angel probably will not happen. Mm-hmm. Actually, I right. say most definitely will not happen. Right. Anyway, um, so Zadkiel... <laughs> Don't anyway me! <laughs> so a fun thing about Zadkiel is that Zadkiel is also sort of the, a leader of the Dominions or like a lordship of the Dominions. They're also called the Dominations, which is a very fun thing for me. Um, they are lordships. They regulate the duties of lower angels. And again, um, kind of what we were saying, it is only with extreme rarity that the angelic lords make themselves physically known to humans. So this is blasphemous, but I wonder if Abraham <laughs> ever got to You know what? I could see. Just like no, get Ab- a kiss from. Ab- uh, Abraham's lame. Abraham literally was going to sacrifice his own son. To like to fucking appease God. Abraham no. was afraid. Abraham's a bitch. Let's be honest. Abraham, like, Abraham is the wives. father. Abraham is the father of nations. Father of these nuts. How about that? Huh? You know what? You're so right. Um, Possibility. <laughs> no, I have more to fucking say. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Hands up. Hands up. Go what you got. What you got? Much like you, whenever you pontificate. Um, Zadkiel being about mercy and freedom, as well as just straight up is depicted with knives and daggers. That's great. Um, there's freedom of the soul, um, a very diplomatic and community-based flavor to everything that Zadkiel is about in essence. Obviously, this doesn't give us a lot about personality whatsoever. Um, but for the most part, again, angels and whoever whatever they're all gonna have different things that they're about and there's only so much that you can get from someone that's just very community based and likes purple you know yeah so, but here's the thing with that, if we yeah. if we make the worst assumptions from them or like if we because we we stereotype in this show um like we said earlier, it's like a hippie kind of vibe. And if you were going about the worst, where like they're very community oriented, they're still very like they're like this is like a commune type vibe, where it could be like they invite you into a fucking commune for like Jesus, like a Jesus commune, which is a cult. <laughs> you are getting invited. You are getting dragged into a cult by this like just this person who's like going to be like, hey, listen, they're really cool, really merciful. Like they really like they just care about you. And then you're drinking Kool Aid. <laughs> so, Zary, like, because again, I think we have to bring in the point where archangels are loyal. Like, yeah, Zachiel is going to like put the Jesus and God way above boning you. You are boning you is like the least priority. And the only reason, even even the story of Abraham and Isaac, even remotely, the only reason Zachiel even stopped Abraham is because God told him to. Because if anybody had not said anything, had God not said anything, no one was going to stop Abraham from murdering his son. <laughs> Just straight up. No one was going to stop Abraham from murdering his son. Just straight up. So is Zachiel really mercy or is he just doing – or are they just doing what God commanded? You know, and it is that For a mercy? Sure. Absolutely, it's just it's everything is about God. I will say, a very fun uh, media representation of Zed Kiel is from this like comic from years ago on Tumblr called Satan and Me, which I'm not. I don't know who remembers that. Zed Kiel again is presented or represented as with a masculine and a feminine representation oh, oh holy shit i read this comic on tumblr yes 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 holy yes. shit and this sad kill is evil <laughs> just <laughs> straight up <laughs> which that's not very I, merciful it's hmm? not very merciful it's not very freedom it's not very justice but hey i love someone that has uh multi multi is multifaceted and is versatile yeah apparently and, you don't like bitch boys is what i'm hearing i don't why would i Do you, it's either it's either Zad Kiel is a bitch boy, angelic twink, or a malicious evil person that has, you know, power dynamic. So there's struggle. There's there's no in between. It's there. It's an angel. It's an angel. It's All an right. angel. So I think the we've talked about is one. <laughs> oh, we, we're just jumping right into it. Possibility. Just, I would. 
again, we don't do zeros. One. It's definitely a one. Again, archangels do not come to Earth. They don't mate with humans. They don't do it. Boning that heal. Unless it's an extreme, like, canon universe, like Satan, me, or, like, Lucifer, where angels, like, come to Earth. But even then, even in both of those statements, the angels were very hesitant to even interact with humans. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. one, two at in, most. In, yeah. In this case, I am that human that's like, hey, Zadkiel, like, I'm, I'm, I'm praying, and I, like, I'm in confession, and I am like, I when I go on a date with Zadkiel and then the priest is going to be like, what the fuck? Get uh, out of here. This is weird. This is not what confessional is about. <laughs> Why not? Anyway. Attractiveness? Eight out of 10. Eight, eight out of 10. Again, they are attractiveness. You'll know is usually on a higher scale for all, for all of these months. Yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> undoubtedly. And Zadkiel again, being androgynous, being able to very much like, I think, I think the better term for it is gender fluid is sure. just being very gender fluid being able to be like doing all that hot just hot <laughs> i think joe you're saying an eight as well yes i'll say an eight Are, is this going to be one of ours where our scores line up just like together? that'd be really funny that'd be really really funny <laughs> audacity this is very audacious this is another like this would be a nine to a ten this is a very odd oh no i'm yeah. sorry i'm sorry one opposite to two. one to a two again this own scale our own scale i don't know <laughs> uh one to a two i think even a one uh yeah i want to say i feel like <laughs> no 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 i don't no. even want to hear it i don't want to hear your when argument abraham <laughs> no you can't keep referencing abraham and isaac as a defense no that was the one instance in which that kill well i don't know how many times that kill appeared in like real life but like literally what if i became the leader of the cult and was like this is specifically about that kill if i am abraham and the you cult is you're not I, abraham you're not you're, one say joe's two. answer is one no <laughs> you're not abraham you're not the reincarnation of abraham i'm really not i'm really not but it's <laughs> hilarious um what's next uh, the uh, parental approval which i will say i will put a five the reason being one it is an angel and for the same reason as solars if my parents saw an angel they'd be like impregnate our son but two <laughs> i would say they'd be hesitant because zacule can be is very like non-binary gender fluid and my parents are homophobic and has a knife collection yeah so it'd be this very much we i shouldn't probably say my parents are homophobic on the, in case they ever see this podcast <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't say that <laughs> you could edit, producers you could choose if you want to keep that one in but uh my parents probably would would frown upon non-binaryism and uh gender fluid so they'd be like very awkward they'd be in this really dichotomy of like it's an eight they're an angel i'm in love but also gay what are your pronouns what is a pronoun a pronoun is that an adjective in action so i would put i'm gonna put it in the middle of the road as a five i'm gonna say seven seven okay i think angel status definitely still helps but because Zad Kiel and I will have to do what many other trans relationships that I've had, and it's just very much like my parents are going to view you as whatever you, whatever your perception is. Mm -hmm. So I hope that you understand where I'm coming from with this. With if you want to be my parents, that is the that is the experience that we're going to have. So it'll be a whole conversation, um, but it's a seven. Okay, so now we got to pause for a little bit of some math to figure out what our overall scores are. All right, so our overall score for this one, is, for Zachiel, the Angel of Mercy, is a 4.1. I got like a 3.75 because my scores are more on the lower end because of just how not really possible it is to, to, fuck, the, to fuck the Angel of Mercy. And Joe, I think you got a 4. what? 4.5. Okay. So that 4.5 is a very much a lower score. But this is where I'll ask. We did it for Solar, so I'll ask you, do you want to give it a seal of approval or disapproval? No answer will make you happy, so we're just going to leave it at whatever the overall score is. <laughs> You're right. 
I'm glad you understand how this process works. Now. <laughs> so we've talked about one that I want. Uh, we've talked about one celestial on my end. We talked about one celestial through Joe's. It is now time for our producer's one, our producer celestial cho- of choice. Uh, me and Joe again are opening this for the first time on just uh, while we're recording. We're going to see what our producer Dare uh, at NB Dare on Twitter has chosen. I hate you. I I'm, hate you. I'm standing up for my chair. I hate you. I I, I could fuck this. It's a, what? Mm. All right. Uh, for our listeners at home, I have stood up. I've done through my chair. Producer pick for this episode is the Chiron, as as depicted in Dungeons and Dragons Five E. I, this is a horse this is a horse I don't even want to I, There's pause for sexy description Kirans were noble creatures local to the celestial planes who either worked for good aligned deities in direct opposition to the forces of evil or served as protectors of large areas of the mortal world they were regarded as harbingers of good fortune, and days when a Kirin was sighted were considered blessed. Kirins were similar to unicorns in some respects, as both were noble equine creatures with a single horn. They had stag-like bodies, but were covered in golden scales instead of fur, which gave them the appearance of being ablaze in magical light. They normally had deep violet eyes and melodious voices. This is a horse. This is just um this this is just a straight horse. This is just well no, okay. So uh, uh I'll read a bit of the description for us. Uh Chirons are similar to unicorns in some respect, both noble and unique creatures with a single horn, stag like body. I deep violet eyes and melodious voices. Oh don't don't read it like that. Don't read it like that. But okay, so they're lawful good. I'm with okay. I'm with it. I I'm with it to a degree. They're pacifists. They can communicate via telepathy. This it, this is a horse. Female chirons are extremely rare, and their methods of reproduction are a closely guarded secret from mortals. That's very interesting. I'm sorry. I'm, I think I'm getting corrected in in the chat by our producers. This is a unicorn. No. No, no, it's a horse. Okay. It's a celestial unicorn like being. I, but I okay. D- initial an, initial shock gone. <laughs> a, initial shock gone. Um d- <sighs> I have no I words. I don't think it's gone. I, cause I, I, this is not what I thought the first ever producer pick was gonna be. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be so straight up honest. I, uh, I thought it was gonna be like biblical angel or like, a, like an angel in media or like a big, I don't know, like a cloud. I, I thought it'd be a cloud. I'll be honest. Anything in my brain did not prepare me for Kyron. I want you to know, I was looking up mods like, D and D monsters to look at to pick for today, and I saw the Chiron, and I was like, "No one's gonna pick that. <laughs> no one's gonna pick it." And here I am, hour and a half later, proven wrong. Prove, don't type at me, cause don't. <laughs> so, okay, they're lawful good, which is nice. Uh, anything, anything coming standing up for you, Joe? Because I, I, I'm still a little bit in shock for this. On the Forgotten Realms uh, fandom wiki page. Under the heading Society, there is a portrait of a charismatic Chiron, and I need you to look at that. I need okay. you to look at that. I'm scrolling down. Hold on. It's lo- it's loading for... Ah! <laughs> what the fuck is that? What That's the a, fuck is that? A charismatic Chiron. <laughs> Why does he have a mustache? <laughs> I, I I think because in some um, respects, the Chiron is based off of like Eastern depictions of like dragons because like a chirons can also be draconic as well mm, okay 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 i i, I uh... they are really fucking interesting to me this is the first time that i have seen these do you never use them in D D like as a monster or anything like that no 
I should use them more because they do look cool. Like I do think with everything that our producers are fine, that they're lawfully good, like they're considered very blessed and like they're very just like they avoid combat, which I think is really cool. And I think com- like telepathy and having those kind of conversations is dope. The problem, again, as I think I've stated from the get-go, is the bodily shape is of a Mm -hmm. horse. And I've seen enough Twitter porn to know what's about to happen. Okay, I will say... Don't look at me like that, Kes. I will say, so the overall appearance of Kieran's, Kieran's, Kieran's varied depending on the power or deity they served. Some look like giant unicorns, draconic, they could vary in size, so they're not necessarily all huge. Um, and they have horns, whatever those look like. So I wonder, depending on the specific celestial deity that they serve, if the lower half or, you know, whatever part of them could be more humanoid it's like not an impossibility mm-hmm. i don't think yeah i don't think it is an impossibility for them to shave yeah they do have like innate spell casting so i do think it's possible for they them could polymorph to, probably yeah they can definitely polymorph it also says that they mostly stay off the ground which is like something we always consider is like they don't really touch the ground they don't really leave the celestial plane so them coming yeah. to meet you is also very rare I think you would have to transcend into the celestial plane in order to even bone this horse. Yeah. And I'm willing. So you, you know how like centaurs even like that is like a full unchangeable lower half, but I'm still down. Minotaurs, full bull people, but I'm still down. I I need I need everyone to know. I need everyone who's watching to know that I'm just sitting here staring at our producer, Kez, lose her fucking mind. Absolutely go feral. I'm, I do think, okay, so they could change. They could do that. I do think it's not physically possible with a horse peen. Okay. This is, this part's about to get graphic for everybody involved. So if you're not really, if you enjoy the conversation, but also just don't want to get really graphic, uh, producers will, set a time let's put like a giant sound i don't know we'll figure something out but this is about to get a little bit graphic uh so skip like 30 seconds ahead physically a horse penis is bigger than most people getting that into you not not gonna work it's 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 physically impossible for a human to I, do that i think they would be accommodating it would change their size because they can literally do that all right you know if they're they do seem nice and pacifistic i do think they would they would do what they got to do to make sure that you can, if you, you're both having a good time. Honestly, this is the best one today. That says more about you than anything I could ever. <laughs> <laughs> do we just want to move on to the scale? Yeah, let's just move on to the fucking scale at this point. Let's just <laughs> let's just move on. I'm I'm defeated. I, this is this is our own podcast, and I'm defeated. Every day, you every time. I I'm gonna make editing this a living hell for our producers from now on. No, they do this. Thing. No. All right, I'm gonna ex- editor note include three air horns at this point. Three air horns back to back, different 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 uh crickets, different crickets. Cricket. So for possibility, according to the notes, uh, they don't really leave the celestial realm, and the yeah. other times they do is during times of crisis. Uh, when like something is threatening the land or they're like being representative by their uh their god so i do think that it's not very it's, possible it's, it's hard it's gonna be like a three or four yeah yeah i'd, I'd say a three or four i'd i'd, I'd give it a th- i'd give it a four I'd, i think i'll give it a four, four. yeah we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do a four for this one so then attractiveness i'm giving this a two this is a <laughs> fucking horse I'm not letting this go. I'm not I'm not letting this go. It can speak to your mind. It is it's good natured. Beautiful. It does community work. It is a nature person. It is a beautiful creature mentally. It is like perfect. It is your perfect partner. It's a fucking horse physically. I don't give a shit. I'm standing up for everyone who's wondering at home. I'm it's a fucking horse. 2 7 <laughs> 
Let's just move on. I don't think you want to know. I don't think you want to know. I'm sorry. I need to, I need to cut that bit real quick. Clerk, you really have just like, you freaking fricks energy. Like, Because it is. Because why? Wait, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really, okay, so now for uh, audacity. I do. It's a fucking horse, but it also it's a kind horse. It definitely will talk to you, but it a also kind horse. But they also will not tell you about reproduction. Yeah, that is true. I I'm so curious what a Chiron and a mortal's like uh, offspring would even be like I, an Azamor. I think I think this is what this is interesting. There's actually a D and D homebrew thing. Which is why Wizard of the Coast sucks. Um, a DD homebrew thing, which is that you can do half races, not just like half elf, where it's just like half mm-hmm. draconic and like half, like if a, if a dragon and a half orc, it'd be like a half draconic, half orc kind of vibe, and you can do the stuff. If that were the case, this is technically a celestial, but it's also a fucking horse. So I think it would technically be half centaur, half asimar. Yeah. So it'd be like wings on the top half, and then like a horse body, not like a all golden Azamar horse have body. Wings. Well, I mean, some do. Depends on like it's not a fallen it Asimar. Depends. It depends. I mean, like it it's depends. it's coming from a like this is a celestial being that still exists in the celestial world. So I don't think it'd be a fallen one that doesn't have wings. Unless do I, I haven't played Asimars very much, so I'm not sure about like how that works. But uh, if they do have, they have like a human Asimar half on the top, and then like a golden, uh, golden horse half on the bottom. I'm fucking that. I hate that this conversation is making me think about just just this reproduction of this, and then also I hate how you just said that like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Audacity. I, I'd, um, I'd fuck that too. I'm not gonna sit here in front. I would. I would try it. You watch Centaur World. Okay. All right. That's a good show. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and be insulted like that. It's a good show. No, it is. I didn't, I need to finish watching it. Um, we do, we do watch Audacity. Movies. Audacity. Audacity. I'm trying to think. I don't, I, it's like. It's very hard to tell for this one, to be honest. It's, it's tough because A, it exists up in, a, again, like we said, it exists up in a celestial yeah. world. It really rarely comes down. It always like floats above the ground. It's a fucking horse, but also it's very kind. It's like it believes in community outreach. It believes in like like talking to people and being good and like goodness in the world and all this other shit. So I don't think it's as audacious to try. I yeah, I think because once you become um like a like an intense higher level spellcaster, you can plane shift. Yeah, so it's you can go to the plane. And if you um, like I yeah, I think middle of the road. I, I agree think with it's you. Five. Yeah, I think it's five. Real middle of the road. I think five is a, is a good point. It's one of those. It's not too bad, but definitely not possible. Parental approval one. <laughs> and I did. It, it would be hard. It would be very hard. Why, Joe? Why would it be hard? Uh, because his dick. Because his penis. Um. No, yeah, because it's a horse. I want to end the podcast. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Um, what if you said one? one yeah, that makes it's sense. a fucking horse. If I tell my parents I'm fucking a golden god and horse, I'm getting locked up. <laughs> Especially since they're homophobic. I'm gonna say two. We'll say two. Your parents would be cool with you bringing home a horse and saying I'm fucking that. Two is not a good score whatsoever. So that two means there's a possibility. I'm not gonna, you know, we're not gonna get to the bottom. We're not gonna get to the bottom. Uh huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pause for math. Pause for math, everybody. So our overall score for the fuck me Kieran. for the Kieran. I can't even believe that we're doing. We're talking about this horse fuck. Uh, is a three point seven five. I got a three. Uh, our Joe got a uh, what you get for it? It was like a four point five. I, 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 I just don't have the energy for this, <laughs> Kieran. 
where you start the podcast with energy, I suck all of it into my own body and take it from you. It really feels like that. I start off these podcasts on a high note and end it on a low every time. It, it feels like more of my soul is being drained. You fucking succubus. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've gone through our three monsters, uh, fuck you, producers, for picking the guy <laughs> Let's rank them all for our Celestial episode. So for this episode, uh, coming in third place is our producer's pick of the Kieran, Kyron, the golden horse unicorn thing of the Celestial Plane, which I'm fine with that score. I'm fine with being it as low as it is. <laughs> Any thoughts for you, Joe? Yeah, it's fine. All right. Fucking horse piece of shit in second place at a score of 4.1 is zadkiel the archangel of mercy which you know for being as middle as the road zadkiel was uh i think is fine i think it's a 4.1 is fine it's just not very possible with archangels and i think that's what's the problem with the celestial plane is that it's not really possible to do this unless it's in certain media which i think is what we're, we're realizing today <laughs> and in first place to the the callous surprise of all three in the call which is me joe and our producers and even though it's taken a hit of disapproval from two of uh, from two of us is the solar at 4.4 that's we we said they were going to be the highest like we want to knock it down and it still ended up being the highest of the episode look at us Look! Look! Look at where we're at. You. You know what? No! 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 I'm. I'm vindicated. Actually, shut up. I'm vindicated. Because here's the thing: you insulted my pick for the uh-huh. entire fucking episode. Dragged uh-huh. it. Should have picked this. Should have picked that. This is so much cooler. And look who's on top. Look who's on. I'm fucking vindicated. You know what? I made the right choice. Okay. Because I fucking won this episode. I won. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what? That's the one. There's winning in this podcast. There's sure. winning, and I am doing that. It's me. <laughs> I won. Put it on everyone who's counting at home. The scoreboard, cleric, one. Joe, zero. Producers, <laughs> have I, a point. That is not true. <laughs> no, I've definitely won. I'm winning. If we're counting the score from now officially, I'm winning. <laughs> okay. I've taken the lead. Okay. But here's what we've learned today. I think we've learned two closing thoughts, or at least my closing thoughts. Uh, One is Celestials are actually on the lower end of all the monsters we've talked about. Out of of our four episodes, I think Celestials... You're going to hell. We're sinners. I mean, we are. Look at the podcast we've made. And if I have to go to heaven and deal with those boring fucks, I'd rather jump into the Horn Devil's arms. (laughs) So, Angels, hot but unobtainable, I think is my closing thought. Joe? Yeah, pretty much. Um, the only angels I'm ever interested in are fallen ones. And if actually, honestly, my favorite Azamar are the Scourge Azamar. Oh. Um, so. Join us on the. Give me. On the Azamar episode. <laughs> <laughs> give, me an, a, give me an overworked workaholic eldest daughter situation. Mm. And we can get her a nice dom at some point. Nice. That's actually an ideal. Uh, so I hope you've all enjoyed this latest episode of the Monster Fuckers Anonymous podcast. We are so excited to put this out. I think we've... This is, I want to say, is a good general closing thought for... Whether or not we include this in the episode is up to you, uh, Producer Kez, but I do want to say this uh, for this little chunk. So this is a little bit of a final thought closing arc for these first four episodes. This is the first four episodes that we are recording just for uh, viewers' thoughts. And I've enjoyed this immensely. Uh, I've enjoyed recording with Joe and Kez and everybody and making this podcast as it is. And I hope that everybody's listening, is enjoying it, and want to keep seeing it further. So if you are enjoying it and you do want to see more of it, please let us know. See what you're interested in. If you have suggestions, please do. Because I think all three of us, everyone who's everybody who's doing this podcast, enjoy it so much. And I enjoy just doing it. And I hope that you all enjoyed our fucking ramblings on this disgusting, disgusting topic. Uh, any closing, super closing thoughts, Joe? Ye- I'm playing Tetris. 
You're playing Tetris? I'm playing Tetris. I'm gonna open up Tetris right now. Get the all right, end the podcast. Get the fuck out of here. Get, go, go. Put put the closing music on. All right, I'm gonna fucking <laughs> traverse you in Tetris right now. <laughs> <laughs>